coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. I'm saying that thing you are giving thanks for was only possible because there was someone somewhere down in the line of that thanksgiving. There was someone somewhere who was willing to be of use to you directly or indirectly and there was someone somewhere who was generous for you. Hello everyone, I'm Pastor Nkechi Ene and welcome to my home and thank you for letting me into your home and into your private place or wherever you are. Today I'm really excited about what I'm here to do. I'm here to give some really good news that gives me a lot of joy. Now before I do that, I'll tell you one fun fact about myself that should give you a hint. I love to write and I love to read. I love to write and I love to read. Yes, you guessed right, my brand new book Dancing with your spirit, being led by the Holy Spirit is out and available. It's out now as an e-book, an electronic book, a digital book. You can read it on Amazon Kindle. You can get it on Akada Books. You can get it on our website. You can buy the book and read it. Dancing with your spirit, being led by the Holy Spirit. And I had the honor of having Reverend Emiko Amoshika write the foreword for the book. And you want to read what he wrote, I can tell you. And this is the book right here in my own library, in iBooks right here. In my own library, there is Dancing With Your Spirit, that's it. And the chapters are right there, and you can open them up. There's a forward, there's the introduction. Section one is who is the Holy Spirit. Section two, you know, talks about who am I. Section three tells you what is a dance. You keep hearing about dancing with the Spirit. What is a dance with Him? And section four tells us what happens when you dance with him. This is 17 chapters of the word of God. 17 chapters that will open your eyes into what it really means as a child of God to be led by the Holy Spirit. So come with me on this journey. Get yourself your own copy. Get it for somebody else. The e-books are available. Okada Books, Amazon Kindle, on our website. And very soon the hard copies will be made available. I'll be back here to tell you, dancing with your spirit, being led by the Holy Spirit. Today's message is titled, Cycles of Thanksgiving. Everybody say cycles, cycles of thanksgiving. What is a cycle? A cycle is a series of events that are regularly repeated in the same order. A series of events that are regularly repeated in the same order. So the first thing to get from this, really what I'm saying here with the title of this message, is this may be a day set aside in the church for thanksgiving, but thanksgiving doesn't only happen today. Amen. How many days in the year Thanksgiving happens? How many? 365 days of the year. 365 days of the year Thanksgiving happens. Amen. So cycles, I said, is a series of events that are regularly repeated in the same order. Now Thanksgiving, from the dictionary, is a giving of gratitude, especially towards God. It's a giving of gratitude, especially towards God. From the Greek, is the word Eucharistia. Eucharistia. E-U-C-H-A-R-I-S-T-I-A. E-U-C-H-A-R-I-S-T-I-A. That's thanksgiving from the Greek. And it means the giving of thanks. The giving of thanks for God's grace. I like that. Note that. Gratitude. The giving of thanks for God's grace, gratitude. So we're going to read from 2 Corinthians 9, 1 to 15. 2 Corinthians 9, 
1 to 15. Now concerning the ministering to the saints, it is superfluous for me to write to you. If I know your willingness, about which I boast of you to the Macedonians, that Achaia was ready a year ago, and your zeal has stirred up the majority. Yet I have sent the brethren, lest our boasting of you should be in vain in this respect. That as I said, you may be ready. He's speaking to the Corinthian church and saying how he was bragging on them to the Philippian church. That as I said, you may be ready. Lest if some Macedonians come with me and find you unprepared, we, not to mention you, should be ashamed of this confident boasting. Therefore, I thought it necessary to exhort the brethren to go to you ahead of time and prepare your generous gift beforehand, which you had previously promised, that it may be ready as a matter of generosity and not as a grudging obligation. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he proposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. Now may he, who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, Supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness while you are enriched in everything for all liberality, which causes thanksgiving, which causes what? Through us to God. For the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also is abounding through many thanksgivings. Somebody say many thanksgivings to God. Well, through the proof of this ministry, they glorify God. Say they glorify God. For the obedience of your confession to the gospel of Christ. And for your liberal sharing with them and all men. And by their prayer for you, who long for you, because of the exceeding grace. Everybody say exceeding grace. Of God in you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable, or as the King James would say, for his unspeakable gift. Amen. I want to read 2 Corinthians 4.15 also. So I've just read 2 Corinthians 9, 1 to 15. Now I want to read 2 Corinthians 4 verse 15 from three different translations. Are you listening? For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many, the thanksgiving of many, redound to the glory of God. The thanksgiving of many. All these things are for you. And so the grace of God is being given to more and more people. This will bring more and more thanks. Somebody say more and more thanks. More and more thanks to God for his glory. From the Amplified. For all these things are taking place for your sake. So that the more grace, divine favor and spiritual blessing extends to more and more people. Say more and more people. And multiplies through the many. Say many. The more thanksgiving. Say more thanksgiving. May increase. Say increase. And redound to the glory of God. So from all these scriptures. We saw many thanksgivings. We saw thanksgiving of many. We saw many many more thanksgivings. We see something here. And that's what we're talking about. Cycles of thanksgiving. We see how one giving results in another thanksgiving and another thanksgiving and another thanksgiving and it continues like that. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. So I've given you the, the definition of thanksgiving and the definition of cycle. So I said this busting your presses, we've come for thanksgiving. We've come for what? I can't hear you. And with the thanksgiving we will do today, we will trigger even many more thanksgivings in the name of Jesus. And why is it important to give many more thanksgiving, thanksgivings? Because with these thanksgivings, we declare the glory of God. The thanksgivings are bound to the glory of God. Amen. So it's, it's very exciting to think that if I give thanks, and what I use to give thanks or what I declare impacts somebody else, what would that person do? Huh? And that person...
person would tell someone else, and what would that happen? What, what would happen next? And he goes all the way around, and he comes back to me, and what do I do again? And as I give thanks, what happens? Thanks even is a cycle. Many more. Many more people are impacted by the glory of God. Many more people give thanks to God. And if someone says, is it that important to give thanks to God? Let me say this to you. Jesus expects your thanksgiving. Say, Pastor, you're just saying that to make us give. Oh, no, no, no. Go to Luke 17. You see the story of the ten lepers. And what happened to Jesus there? The ten lepers got cleansed. And they all, you know, as they were going, the Bible says, says go show yourself to the priest. As they were going, they got cleansed. What happened? One turned back. And Jesus said, oh, you're a better person. Forget those people. Is that what he said? Where are the nine? Where are the other nine? I mean, I can almost imagine he was, sorry to use this word, hurt or disappointed. Where are the other nine? Were there not ten of you that were cleansed? He now told the other guy, your faith has made you whole. Sozo, your faith has made you complete, has healed you. Okay, that means that the man's coming back was an act of faith. You're coming to give thanks. It's an act of faith. You're coming back to say thank you to the source. It's an act of faith. So Jesus expects your thanksgiving. And just being a human person, you know, and I'm not Jesus. I can feel him. Just me as a person, as a pastor. There are times when you have a very serious situation. Pastor fasts and prays and does all that for you. And you're delivered from it. It might be a, a healing. And then you hear from someone that you are healed. I hear from someone. There is an initial, hmm, that hurt. Because they knew how to reach me when the problem was hot. And I know what I did by connecting to God. I didn't do it myself. You became my prayer point. There's a chair in, in my bedroom. My husband knows the chair. Where I sit down sometimes in the middle of the night. But most, most times when I do that, there's somebody's matter I'm carrying. So I sat in the chair for you. I called out your name. And then you got healed. And you never came back. I'm not even asking you to come back with anything. Though you should. Just let me know you have been healed. Just let me know. But even then, you should come back with something. How else do you say thanks with mouth? It's not a function of how much you have. We're going to learn that. It's the heart. The heart of faith. The heart of gratitude. How can you be expecting a baby for nine years? And the baby didn't come. And after nine years, the baby now comes. Miraculously. All the attempts and things you've done never worked. And the baby now comes. And then when the baby is finally here, you come to show me the baby. And your gift to me is a picture of the baby. Your baby is cute, but what's now when you use a baby picture? When I can ask for the little baby and lay hands on the baby and bless the baby. How can you come after nine years with a picture of the baby? Pastor, you know, we have something very small. You start digging inside your pocket, digging, digging. Then you dig it out. Just a picture of our baby. I love the picture. It's cute, but uh, something for Fulham. Is that gospel? So if me, a human being, can expect something and feel it, when even a common Thanksgiving doesn't come back. I can tell you that God expects your thanksgiving. And it's quite disappointing when it doesn't come. But all of that is changing around for even for those who didn't know it before. Amen. Cycles of thanksgiving. Because when you give thanks, somebody else gives thanks. And somebody else gives thanks. And somebody else gives thanks. We have many thanksgivings arising up to the Father. Amen. Amen. So first of all, cycles of thanksgiving are triggered by a willing and a generous heart. We read in verse 2, I know your willingness. We read in verse 5, your generous gift, a matter of generosity. We read in verse 7, let each one give as he proposes in his heart. We read in verse 11, you are enriched in everything for all liberality. And that causes thanksgiving. We read in verse 13, for your liberal sharing. So what do you see there? Willingness and excess. Generosity at the foundation of every thanksgiving is someone who chose to be willing and generous. Get this now. I'm now not talking about the person who's giving thanks. 
I'm saying that thing you are giving thanks for was only possible because there was someone somewhere down in the line of that thanksgiving. There was someone somewhere who was willing to be of use to you directly or indirectly and there was someone somewhere who was generous for you. I'll say it again. Right in the line, you're coming here to give thanks. There was someone somewhere. There were people somewhere down the line. They could have been somewhere 30 years ago. But their act of willingness and generosity made it possible for you to receive that thing that you're giving thanks for today. If you can't find anybody else, find Pastor Charles, who was willing to come to Port Harcourt. And that's how there was a carpenter's church for you to come to. And he was willing and generous. And we're going to find that generosity has, has nothing to do with how much money you have. Generosity is, is the state of your heart. He was willing and generous because of him. Somebody who was willing and generous. And if you take it further back, whoever recognized the call of God upon his life and mentored him to the point where he could hear God like that, is still somewhere at the bottom of your thanksgiving today. Are you getting this? Somewhere there. So cycles of thanksgiving are triggered, triggered at the root somewhere is a willing and generous person. And if you still go further down and can't find anybody, find Jesus, who was willing and generous, church, at the foundation of everything you're giving thanks for today. There was someone who made it possible by their willingness and your generosity. So what do you do when you say thanks? You do it willingly and generously as well. And you will be found at the bottom of somebody else's thanksgiving in the future. Glory be to God. At the bottom, they'll find you based on your giving and your thanksgiving today. Somebody else five years from now, five months from now, five days from now, will be impacted in some way or the other by your willingness and your generosity. At the foundation of every thanksgiving, there's somebody who was willing and who was generous. What does it mean to be generous? To be ready to do more than expected. To be ready to be a blessing to someone above and beyond what they expect of you. That's what it means to be generous. So I'll say this, church. Don't postpone your generosity and your thanksgiving. You will be postponing someone else's thanksgiving. Don't postpone your generosity and your thanksgiving. When you do that, you will be postponing someone else's thanksgiving. Glory be to God. That was the first point. Cycles of thanksgiving are triggered by a willing and generous heart. Like I said, I'm going to fly through this. Number two, cycles of thanksgiving are empowered by an abundance of grace from God. This is very important for those who believe you have to have money to give thanks or to be generous. Cycles of thanksgiving are not empowered by your bank account. They're not empowered by how much you have. Cycles of thanksgiving are empowered by the abundance of grace from God. And you know, the depth of the value you place on the thing you are giving thanks for determines your thanksgiving. The depth. Lord, you saved my dog from death. It's kind of different from you saved my wife from death. Except you are such a dog lover that you need hands laid on you. <laughs> Lord, you saved me from the rain. It's kind of different from everybody else had their roofs blown off on my street and their walls come down. But my roof did not go off with that terrible storm that took place sometime this year. Kind of different. So the value you place on that thing you are giving thanks for kind of determines your ability to tap into the grace of God and give thanks. But your thanksgiving and the cycles that follow it are empowered by the abundance of God's grace. And the more you value what God has done for you, the more you will tap into that grace. It has nothing to do with how much money you have. Somebody say amen if you get it. The abundance of God's grace. The abundance of God's grace. So when you receive God's grace, and does God... Give his grace generously or partially. In all of his fullness, more than expected, God holds back nothing from you. If he did not withhold his only son, 
from you. How will he withhold any good thing from you? That's what his grace is about. It's given in generosity. And in that grace you receive is a spirit of generosity. You can't receive something and not be like that thing you're receiving. So everybody here who's received of the grace of God has received of the spirit of generosity. And you recognize that that generosity, when you practice it, is found at the bottom of somebody else's thanksgiving. So it's not really about you. It's about God. And the Bible said to me and to all men. That's what it's about. Are you getting this, church? The abundance of grace. There is an abundance of grace released to every believer. But not every believer is enjoying the abundance of grace. There is a spirit of generosity upon everyone who has received the grace of God. But people have excluded themselves from that spirit. Because they think they don't have money. The spirit of generosity is different from philanthropy. I want to say that very clearly. The spirit of generosity is different from philanthropy. Philanthropy is the desire to promote the welfare of others, especially expressed by generous donation of money to good causes. That sounds great. What's wrong with that? You want to promote somebody else's welfare. We're talking about cycles of thanksgiving. Certainly. I mean, is there anything wrong with that? And how do you express it? By the donation of a generous sum of money for good causes. But is the spirit of generosity the same as philanthropy? The spirit of generosity is drawn from the abundance of God's grace. And it doesn't really have much to do with how much you have. The philanthropist has his source as his wealth. So you cannot really find a poor person who is a successful philanthropist. True or false? If you are poor and you are doing some philanthropy, it is because you have connected to a rich person who can kick you out tomorrow or you have a company that goes around like an NGO, you know, and, you are, and some of that will come back to you because my house will eat. So the philanthropist has his success tied to his own wealth. The giver connected to the spirit of generosity, has his source connected to the grace of God. The wealth of the philanthropist can run dry. The source of the grace of God never runs dry. When the source is grace, you can have 10,000 naira in your account and be more consumed by a spirit of generosity. Because with that 10,000 naira, you could give God 8,000 in expression of that spirit of generosity. If philanthropy brings praise to men, the spirit of generosity brings much more praise to God. Because the source of that spirit, I repeat, is the grace of God. I'd rather have somebody give praise to God over an act of generosity I did and willingness than have someone worship a man he was philanthropic. So cycles of thanksgiving are empowered by the grace of God church. There was a message we preached once and that was one of the points. Don't exclude yourself from the season of thanksgiving. It's not just about you now. It's about those others who will give thanks because of you. The people who are here, they are on scholarship. That was their last bus stop. They give thanks for the Capitals Church. Therefore, they give thanks for you. And I love it when you take it further and sometimes a seed is a twice sown seed. Have you heard of that before? I sow a seed into your life and you take that seed and sow it into someone else's life. For those of you who give seeds and monitor it, we deliver today. Pastor, that cloth I gave you, I have not seen you wear it. You may never see me wear it. Because as you gave me, I may have given it. But pastor, that cloth was very expensive. It's called the spirit of generosity. And sometimes I don't even feel like giving it out. I'm like, Holy Spirit, how, how far now? I say, no, give it to this sister. Guess what has happened? It's a twice sown seed. There's 
thanksgiving coming for me? There's thanksgiving to the person who gave it. There's somebody who hear this story and there's, a, there's thanksgiving. What I'm wearing today, somebody gave it to me. The fabric, everything. I don't, I don't know these things. And they gave it to me last week, a week ago. And I saw it and I said, I'm sewing this for Thanksgiving. You see, because if I didn't do it, maybe by next week it will not be in my house again. It could have gone somewhere as a gift. And after wearing it, they may never see it on me again. But wherever it goes, what happens? Is it twice soon, thrice soon, four times soon? See it. That's the way to live life, church. That's the way to give thanks. So you might come up here this, this afternoon and give a generous gift. Out of that gift, somebody in the church will get blessed. Out of that gift, something extra will happen in the building. Out of that gift, cycles of thanksgiving will be triggered. Because you were willing, you were generous, and you allowed yourself to be empowered by the grace of God. It's from the grace of God it comes, church. Because what you are giving thanks for did not come from a man. The choir sang it. It didn't come from your mother, your father. Even if God used a man, it is God who triggered a man to do it. So if what you are thanking God for came from the grace of God, then your ability to thank God should come from where? Grace of God. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at TV, and also on Pastor Nketi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nketi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website, www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.